Let's talk about why I like to use green screen. I'm often asked, why green? Why not gray? Why not black? Why not white? Uh, doesn't it create a green splashback? Doesn't it cause problems? Now I use green all the time when I'm photographing because I find it is the easiest way to extract the subject. Now of course there are little issues that come up like some splashback, particularly when the green is very close uh, under the feet or there's some reflection. But I'm going to show you how to alleviate that and get rid of it. Now of course you can use grey that works really well and with the new extraction methods in Photoshop and can be a quick cutout as well. But the thing that I found works the best with green is around the hair because it really helps to get those fine details in the hair and and keep them so that all those fine, even the furry fuzzy bits can stay there. So I'm going to show you now how I have my green screen set up. Now the setup is really part of how to make it work. You can't just pull a green screen down and hope for it to work well. You do need to light it well and you do need to set it up well. So let's take a look at the basic setup here. I have everything green. I've got a backdrop that is green. I've actually added wings to my studio and they're green. I've got boxes that are green and the floor that is green. Here's a side shot of my studio. You can see the lights. I actually have four lights up there, that way. <laughs> um, and they surround the subject. So I would normally with strobes use uh, lights that are strip modifiers, but what I've done because of the new setup with the, uh, the doors that open up, I've wanted to make those lights at the back smaller. So they now have barn doors on them and they have honeycomb grids on them to stop the flare. I've got two big soft boxes at the front there uh, and they are Godox lights or Godox, however you like to pronounce them, and they're FV200s. Now these lights also do a strobe effect. So they can operate as strobes and they operate as a continuous light. I'm going to show you with continuous light because I find it's the easiest to use, it's the easiest to understand. You can put your camera sitting on whatever works for the lighting scenario that you've got. Here we are. This is my green setup. Now you can see that where I'm sitting, there's some distance between me and the background. Um, there is light all around me. So you really want to wrap your subject in the light so that you've got enough uh, manipulation opportunity if you don't know which direction your light is coming from in your background. Now if you've shot a background it has a really strong light source, maybe it's from the back, maybe it's from the front, I would then recommend you adjust your light so that that's got the same light source. So you've got really bright light coming from that particular direction. But for the most part, if you do wrap around like this, so you've got light coming from every angle, then you can manipulate that. You can make areas darker and lighter. And it's the same principle that I use when I'm out photographing scenes, people, animals. I use an overcast day. I use a soft lit environment and that makes it really easy to edit. So make sure that you've got enough distance. So we've got about a meter and a half, two meters basically between me and the backdrop. So down on the floor down here, there will be some green spill that will bounce back up onto my shoes, but not too much. And as long as there's enough contrast between me and my feet and the floor, you'll be able to fix that. Now the lights as well. So that backlight is really, really important because it helps to separate your subject from the green. It's really important too that there's enough light on your green screen. So that's why these big modifiers not only light me up, they also light the green screen up. So it means that it's easy, smooth, solid color, really all the same green. These have been painted, but you can use all sorts of backdrops. So you can get vinyl, you can get paper backdrops, you can get uh, velvet backdrops, or you can paint your studio. So any of that will work, but I recommend going with a matte finish, not a highly reflective finish, because of course, reflective finishes will bounce that light back onto your subject. Even these boxes are painted in a matte green finish, so it does work well. 
So I'm now going to take you into Photoshop and just show you the process of how you would extract a subject from the green. Now I've created an action that makes it really easy for this to take place. So you're welcome to go and get the action. Uh, I've got a link for that. But it's really important that you not only know how to press the button, but you know how Photoshop is processing it. So if you need to fix anything, if maybe your green's a little bit different to the green that I use, you can then adjust it and you can make it work for your scenario. So here you can see a picture of my son. He's looking up and this is shot in the green screen studio. You can see that there's some lines uh, where those joins are, but they won't cause much of a problem. And they're very, very easy to mask out quickly. But what we're going to do first is something that I always do with raw files, bringing them in for composite purposes. I bring down the highlights and I bring up the shadows because you can always adjust your image later and make it pop with dodge and burn. But by doing that, it just helps it all blend together uh, when you're compositing. So the other thing that you really want to make sure that you've got set up, and I often do go over this, is that you want to make sure that Photoshop, that you're working with a RAW to start with, and that Photoshop opens as a smart object. So it opens your file as a smart object. You also want to make sure that it's in 16-bit. Now the default will be 8-bit, and that won't be ticked. So you need to make sure that that is ticked and that it's in 16-bit. Once you press OK, it'll always be like that, but you do need to click on that down there. And then what you should see is open object. Now something I could have done before opening this would be to crop it. And I can still go back into the raw by double clicking it. And that's the benefit of making it a smart object because you always have the editing power in camera raw. So you can go back in, you can dodge and burn with the brush, you know, you can adjust exposure and everything. Now I have a crop version. Now one thing you notice, and I want you to take note, it cropped it, but it kept the proportion of the original file. So that is not the ideal way to do it. And that's what I wanted to show you. When you bring it in via Camera Raw from wherever you get it from, the first thing you should do is to make it to crop it. So that then when you're working on it later, you don't have this show up like that. So if I'm in Capture One, for example, uh, this really works from anywhere, but in Capture One, I open with, Photoshop the latest version and that will get back into Camera Raw. So in this instance, I am going to crop it first because then you don't have to try and get rid of all of the outer areas. And we've already got the highlights down, the shadows up, so we'll open that and now we've got the crop version. You can see the difference there. Now the next thing that you would do is you want to go to select color range and then choose the green. So start with the, the green that is the mid-tone, start there. Um, I've got the fuzziness set at, I'm going to set it to 40 to start with. You don't want to go too high because it'll mean other things start to disappear. So you do need to keep an eye on that. Now I will invert this because I want to keep my sun there and I want to get rid of the green. So then you use the plus eyedropper tool and select all of the green. You can also select it on the preview as well, which can be helpful. It means that you can sort of see where there are still areas of green showing up and where there's not. I'll press OK. You can see there's a little bit of green down there and a couple of spots there. I won't worry about that. It's a really, really quick edit with a brush to get rid of that. So I'll just go into my brushes and I will use edge masking, which is in the story art collection. And that'll be at 100% flow. And this is the brush that I've created to use to work around edges. It's just a little bit soft on the edge. Now that I've done that, you can see, if I go in close, you can see there is a slight green edge there. Now there could be a number of ways to get rid of that. Now you could go into select a mask straight away um, and you could shift the edge in. But one of the things I first like to do, and this is all part of the action, is to feather it just by about 0.5%. Just soften it up a little bit. Now another trick that you've got is if you go into filter, other, minimum, you can bring that in. So at the moment it's set to two pixels. If I set it to one, 
that's pretty good. There's still a little touch of green there. So if I set it to two, you don't wanna to go too far. It takes the green away and it just brings that selection in a little bit closer. So that's one step to getting rid of the green edge. Now you don't want to spend too much time at this point working on the image because you don't know how it's going to look in the scene that you bring it into. So you really just want to get it uh, reasonably good. So you might do a little bit of work around the hair and then I'd suggest bringing it into your scene and doing any further adjustment. Don't do work that you don't need to do. Now if we go into select and mask. Traditionally I'd use this tool to select around the edge of the hair and let it adjust that hair area there. But I'll undo that. There is a little button right at the top here that says refine hair. So when I click on that one, you can see what it does. It sort of brings or it selects the hair, but it has taken some of that extra area away. So you could use that tool. If we press OK, the one thing you want to make sure of is that it outputs this to a layer mask, not to a new layer, not to a new document, to a layer mask, because then we can bring back the hair that went missing when we did this, but still keep all of that nice fine refinement there. So if I click OK, you can see, okay, there's some missing. Now if we want to really see how this looks, go to solid color, we'll choose a different color, maybe a bright purple, and we'll pull that underneath. Okay, now we can see where it's missing. I just use a brush at this point and bring back the hair that I know is supposed to be there, but not go too close to the edge. Because what you have here now is that some of that color or that scene that you're going to put your character in front of will sort of come through that fine hair and that is exactly what you want to happen. So you don't want the solid areas to be see-through um, but some of this fine hair on the edge, you want to have that blend. So now if we zoom out, it's all looking pretty good. And you can see there's really not any green um, that you can see around here. If we zoom down to the shoes, even the shoes that were on the green, there's a very slight green hue on here, but it's not very obvious. So as I said, it's all about the lighting, but occasionally you do get a little bit of green spill. So all you need to do to get rid of the green is a hue saturation adjustment layer. So you go to hue saturation adjustment layers and you want to clip it to your subject so it doesn't apply to everything else below because if you've got greenery below, it's going to apply to that. Okay, so up here you have uh, in this section greens. You can choose just the greens and you can see that Photoshop will have the greens there selected. You want to make sure that it has all of the green selected and that it feathers out a little bit. So I tend to bring it up here, let it go a little into the blue, let it go a little into the yellow so that all of the greens are selected. Now if you turn the saturation up, there we go. We can see exactly where that green spill is happening and we can see what we want to get rid of. So you move this around until you get to a sort of warmish, yellowish, brownish tone and then I would pull the saturation down to quite low. So now what we've got is it's changed it just to a desaturated somewhat sort of warmish tone where the greens were and only where the greens were. Now if you had them wearing green uh, and you needed to bring back the green you can then just mask that back so you can paint on that. But that is how you do it. Now you want to also save that. So save that preset. I've got one called green screen and if I click on that, you'll see that it's exactly the same, basically as what I just showed you. The greens, saturation down, warm issue, and it gets rid of it. So I can, every time I wanna adjust that green hue, I can just click on my default, which is under the preset, green, green screen. So that's really how you do it. Then you've got a really, really very easy and clean cutout. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. There are some other ways to cut out and if you, if you work on grey or black or white uh, you might use a different method to cut out. I will just show you that so that you can see how that would work compared to the green. Okay, all I've done here is I've changed the green to grey so you can see how I would cut it out if it was grey. Now one of the great things about shooting on green is you can make the green grey 
very, very easily in Camera Raw or in Lightroom and then you can work with it as though it's grey as well. So you don't have to be regulated just to the green. So let's open that now. And if we go into a selection tool and we go into select subject, it does a pretty decent job of picking up the subject because the subject is on a very plain background. So I'll create a mask of that. So we zoom in there. You can see that it's missed a couple of areas. You can also see that it does need a little bit of clean up around the edges. It's a little more rough uh, than it was when it was green. So while it does a reasonable job, what I find is shooting with green screen means it's a quicker cutout, it's a cleaner cutout, and you've got less work afterwards. Um, and the whole hue green spill is not an issue because of the quick tools that you can use to get rid of that green. So you can see the difference. You can see the work that might be needed to cut out. Now you could use other methods to cut out as well, but the problem with gray, white, black is they're close to the color tones within the skin and within what people are wearing so it's not as straightforward so that's how I shoot with green screen it really does make life easy when you're doing a lot of this cutting out situation and as you could see if I need to convert something to a different color and a different tone it is actually really easy to do and I can even do that in Lightroom so shooting with green screen is not restrictive. It actually opens up a whole lot of doors to you.